in a way. <laughs> My name is Truda. Uh, I'm not an angler. And uh, when people ask me what's my motivation for working with recreational fishing, I say that a lot of men are. Recreational <laughs> 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 fishing. <laughs> so, like, like, like I've been. No, but um, I work for an institute in Tromsa, which is uh, in the north of the area, 69 degrees north. There's still a lot of snow there now. Great fun. Um, uh, I have been working with a green tourism for like 15 years, uh, off and on. Uh, my institute works mainly with fisheries, aquaculture and agriculture, but I've been trying to squeeze in coastal tourism, which is my, I'm a tourism researcher, I, I call myself. And we, So uh, we, we um, pride, ourselves, pride ourselves in having a beautiful coastline in Norway. It is long, as Evan has told you about, and, and also a very varied landscapes and, and nature. Um, we have uh, liberal rules for fishing, like we learned. So uh, Norway is uh, a top uh, priority or a very important uh, uh, fishing destination for many tourists in, in Europe. You can potentially get a lot of fish in a very short period of time. 
So my suggestion would be that we would have different rules from different parts of the, of the coast because the fishing and the prospects of catching a lot of fish is, um, are very different. So, so when we have been working with this, well, um, our friend from the Faroe Islands said that the truth is too big to, to grasp, but I insist as a scientist that we try to grasp, grasp at least some part of that truth and that management uh, is based on knowledge. So that's what we work on. It is not easy to do that in Norway when it comes to marine uh, fishing tourism because we don't have a public registry of these enterprises. So we need to work hard to, to, to know um, the size of the industry and how to monitor and how to sur survey it. So what we have been doing is that we have uh, developed together with the IMR, Institute of Marine Research in Bergen, who you will learn about um, from Keno, uh, of uh, around 440 uh, enterprises that we did survey for um, uh, economic impact study that I will tell you a little bit about. And this is uh, from 2008, the data, and it was financed by the Norwegian Research Council. So we have uh, a lot of what we call the informal sector in Norway. You know, all Scandinavians have a lot of second homes. So and these second homes um, will be rented out to tourists during the summer, uh, and also what we call shoulder seasons, spring and, and autumn. And uh, we don't have any clue how many th these are. So what we have been doing is put together this list of businesses, which are, which are not these private homes, but um, what we call professional uh, enterprises. And it's not easy to see, but we define that as an enterprise that offers a combination of accommodation facilities, both rental and ducking and freezer facilities, and also, and also a host. Uh, to take care, so it's not like you're on your own, just you have a key to that cabin. You have a host there. Oops, that we can read. So, 434 <coughs> companies, I um, uh, can't remember the number of beds now, but um, this is supposed to be saying beds and, and do something about 2,000 boats were mapped in this. I think I will have problems now with, with everything. Maybe you're going to install the machine. Uh, Maybe go out and get two slides. I can check my own. Uh, okay, so I'll just... Uh, 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 yeah, I'll yeah, yeah, like yeah, this. Yeah. Yeah. Just push there. And uh, it's all right, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Just have it like that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Push yeah. the... Uh, push down the side. Yeah, okay. So you see 434 enterprises, uh, 15,000 beds all together in these enterprises, and uh, about uh, 2,300 boats together. We looked at prices, uh, and for accommodation facilities, that would be weak prices, that you can see here, 640, between that 640 and 717 euros per week and the boat rental uh, additional cost. And we found that uh, marine tourism spends, fishing tourism spends uh, 103 euros um, per day on accommodation and on boat rental. <coughs> so we wanted to find out, to study how expenditure of these tourists vary with their nationality, their mode of transportation, if they travel by plane or car, and also with the um, with the traveling group. The Romania in the party, if they have females with them in the group or children. And we, that was a, a thought that we had that we will see some variation there. Uh, when, when we looked upon nationality of Anglo tourists, we found, of course, that um, the, the largest proportion are Germans. We knew that. But uh, we also found something interesting that we have quite a few Norwegian tourists because uh, or that, that buy services from these um, enterprises because we've always been talking about how to regulate the, the foreigners when, when talking about marine fishing tourism in Norway. So um, more and more Norwegians also buy services from these enterprises. So quite a bit of suites and we see uh, <coughs> Dutch. The Dutch have, all, have always been very you know, interested in visiting Norway in a popular country because the topography uh, is appealing to them in their flat country back home. And uh, we see uh, an, an increase in visitors from Russia, Czech Republic, and, and Poland, and, all the, and also the Baltic countries. And these are the changes that the, that the industry see 
we had uh, a, a bad spread when it came to nationality in our in our uh, in our surveys, so we couldn't really conclude a lot. But what we saw was that was some some nationalities stayed longer. Of course, they then they spend more money, so that is possible. From Sweden, Finland, Russia, closer to the to the northern part of Norway, so. They, they, they have a, a shorter travel distance and they stay shorter. Um, tourists visiting the north of Norway spend more money. Uh, it is a better fishing, I would say. My friends from the south will may, maybe disagree. Uh, but uh, the fishing in, in the northern parts of Norway is good. And um, uh, when they visit, we think that they are the more, maybe the more avid anglers that go north and they, they tend to stay, stay longer. So, um, yeah, and we saw some trends in, in which nationalities visit. Besides that, we couldn't say much about the nationality. So looking at travel group, um, we have the male angling parties uh, that are um, uh, the, the main group, of course. And uh, this is um, uh, a sweet, very happy sweet, that I met a couple of years ago. That's a help. And then we have the, the family groups. So we found that 71% of the tourists that we surveyed uh, belong to a male angling party and 29 families, so children or, and or women. Uh, more male angling parties go to the north. We think again that has to do with fishing being best there and, uh, and the more average anglers going there. More family groups visit the western part of Norway. Um, it is closer to the main European markets, you know, shorter travel distance, and children and all that. And also, uh, they have a more um, diverse <coughs> cruising project. There are more things there to do for the, for the, the women and, and the children than in the north, where some of these destinations that offer fishing to tourists, they have only that. Or, or there's no horseback riding or any shopping malls for the women. <laughs> yeah. So they take part more in more different activities in the west and then therefore they spend more money. Um, families spend more money than male angling parties, what we found. Uh, fun travel groups without women spend more money on, on sports equipment. You don't have the, the wife there to say more fishing rods. <laughs> uh, travel groups with women spend more money on clothes. So not so, not so very surprising. Just fishing clothes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just. Tourists spend uh, less, and these groups spend less money on, on both rental and, and fuel uh, when they have um, traveling with children. And it may be obvious that they, they tend to spend less time at sea. And when looking, looking at mode of transportation, we found that all over Norway, 85% traveled um, with their own car. 7% had a rental car, that would be mainly plane travelers that had a rental car, and 8% uh, eight, eight with, their, with their plane. And in Northern Norway, more people travel to Northern Norway with an airplane because of the longer transportation distance, again, from, from the main markets. And uh, in Southern Norway, we found 0% traveled uh, by airplane because they tend to come by boat over the ocean. So we found that plane travelers stay shorter um, than, um, than the car travelers. So you know, from that we should prioritize the car travelers because they stay longer and make more money. Uh, the, the negative uh, bit is that the car travelers tend to bring their beer and, and food with them from, from Germany or wherever they come from. And also they tend to bring more, uh, more fish with them back home. So traveling with a plane, it regulates how much fish uh, it's easier to, to uphold that 15 kilo quota. Uh, plane travelers spend 2.7 times, uh, times more than car travelers on road trips. As we say, they, if you travel by car, you tend to, to bring some of the food because Norway is a high cost country. Beer costs a lot in Norway. So, um, and we also found that plane travelers spend 2.5 times more uh, than car travelers on the road and also, again, we cannot bring as much with you on the plane. So what we did for these spendings that we found, uh, we, we, um, the, the average daily expenditure for different categories, we added up like a simple 
and multiplication there with the number of fishing tourists and guest nights, how many guest nights have had that fishing tourists had in these facilities. What's, what's uh, challenging there is that uh, these enterprises do not only sell their services to, tour to fishing tourists, they have different types of, of groups uh, throughout the year. The fishing tourism season is less around 22-24 uh, weeks uh, during a year, and the rest of the year they're filling up with other guests. So they had a total number of, of uh, in 2008 of guest nights you see there, and then 46% of that uh, were uh, fishing tourist guest nights. And uh, with an average length, length of stay of seven days, or 7.4, we found uh, that makes 82,000 uh, tourists. So I told you that they, they spent 103 euro, euros on boat and accommodation, and altogether, all expenditures, the average spending was 177.5 uh, for tourists. And we calculated up to the total expenditure in Norway, and we also um, calculated the indirect and induced effects of that with the multiplicator that we um, generated from a system called mm Honda, -hmm. which is a uh, system. So, thank you. We had different, we had four different regions that we looked at, so we had four different multipliers for each region. So it was uh, 1.67, yeah. Around there. Mm -hmm. It was higher from the west uh, and then from the north, for instance. In the north, it was only 1.6 because the industry, um, the, the, the trades are different, it's a different pattern. And the effects that it creates has to do with how the industries look in that particular region. Is it really uh, Yeah, I guess this is quite an old study now, it's uh, six years old. Uh, how do you think uh, marine? Fishing tourism has uh, developed in, in Norway since 2008. For instance, uh, the use of plane uh, for transportation. Yeah, I haven't. Well, I haven't had any much funding to, to look into it. But uh, anecdotal, is that what it's called? Anecdotes. Um, I, I think uh, we have had an, an increase in the number of enterprises. We've had an increase in the number of private homes and second homes that are rented out to tourists through Nova Sol and then down, down center and down somewhere. Um, and I, we have had, I don't know how D2 now they have had charter planes, but I don't know the number of charter planes that they have uh, coming in. But we know from tourism that there's a general trend that people tend to take shorter breaks, uh, you know, long weekends and all that, and then they use more often a plane to get in and out. And, um, but I don't have any, you know, I don't have any studies on this, but I, I can tell from the airport in Tromsø that there's a lot of annual fishing tourists there. I'm a little confused. You come to the establishments, but is that when you also interview the anglers? Yes. And how did you? Yeah. Well, that was the, the tricky part was to have um, to access the anglers, the tourists, because they are on the move. And we tried first to um, to hand out the questionnaires in the uh, accommodation facilities, but we didn't have any resources to have people out there uh, to to make sure that they filled in the questionnaire. So that was a bad result. We had some help of, um, from the foreign um, tour operators that do sell fishing trips to Norway. Uh, so they helped us to, through their forums to distribute their, to, their, to their customers, to the databases. Yes. Uh -oh. yeah. mm -hmm.